Urgent chance on such reaction. This is how America's new doomsday weapon works. But on task and purpose. Yeah, this is another task and purpose video that was posted, I think, uh, three or so days ago. And uh, you know, this felt interesting to me because I've been bitching about with about after watching the enforcer videos about the updates in Ukraine versus Russia. Like, if Russia's back against the wall, they might use nuclear weapons. So things like this or newer technology might be enough deterrent for them to <clears throat> not use it. So America have a new doomsday weapon, implying probably nukes. If something like, oh, most powerful doomsday, end of the world, whatever quotation like that is applied, it's probably nuke. That is the only thing humanity has that is at that scale, I think, right? So I'm pretty sure like Russia has something called Poseidon, right? I remember watching or hearing about that a few years ago. Some kind of a submarine weapon that is like insanely powerful. I don't know what makes it powerful. Is it like a lot of nukes, better technology? I'm pretty sure it was something like a drone type technology uh, involving torpedoes. I don't know. I don't know much about that. But yeah, America has some similar technology, I'm guessing, with this. So it's going to be interesting. Let's do it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe so that way I know which videos to react to more. Uh, I love Task and Purpose because, uh, you know, he covers a lot of topics really fast with the ongoing things or related to it, basically like this, which is really interesting. So let's do this one. You're looking at one of 450 intercontinental ballistic missile silos that are strategically scattered across the vast expanse of the American Midwest. Each silo extends 100 feet underground, using the earth and concrete as protection from enemy strikes. These Doomsday Minuteman 3 ICBMs can reach anywhere in the world within 30 minutes. On August 20th, the New York Times revealed that the US government had approved a brand new- Is that a Preston Garvey constant telling you some settlement needs help? Why are they called Minutemen, right? I'm pretty sure this is like one of those floppy disk one, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I watched that from John Oliver, I think, I don't know. New revised nuclear strategy that was specifically focused on countering China and Russia, who they believe have nuclear weapons capabilities that will match the United States in the next decade. Not to sound like a doomer, but I hope somewhere on there it's written, continue to avoid nuclear war at all costs. But there's a potential nah, challenge with thing. executing this strategy. The Minuteman 3 missiles fast aging out. It first came online in the 1970s, and until recently, they were programmed with old-school floppy disks. We're approaching a point where their systems won't work properly anymore. There's a few- I mean, What do you mean if China is getting closer? Don't they already have that technology? This technology is from 1970. They don't have that technology? And every time I see that floppy disk thing and people make fun of it, I always assume the reason behind that is so it can't be hacked. I'm guessing all the floppy disk shit and all that means that uh, you know, it's it's not it's it's not easier to get hacked or something if it's like that old type of way. I thought it was a security thing, right? Fierce debate within the military and congressional leadership about whether or not these kind of land-based nuclear missiles are even necessary anymore. Former Secretary of Defense James Mattis was not a fan. He even said that totally getting don't be one of those, right? I, I've seen that happening in America with F-22 and everything. Like, oh, this is Seoul. You don't need tanks. And like, be too futuristic now. Like. Real world scenarios doesn't change, right? Uh, but the laws of physics are same as they are. Like you need ground-based missiles. I don't get rid of it. Like we have better technology, but what if that technology fails? Like you need some deterrent like that. Rid of them would reduce the danger of accidentally starting a nuclear war. On the other hand, America's proposed replacement next generation doomsday weapon is the Sentinel missile, which will cost upwards of 141 billion. Okay. Also, they're, they're saying like, okay, ground base might uh, cause accidents or something. You know, somebody said a quote, right? What if engineering fails? Then make sure it doesn't fail. That's what engineers does, right? This is the top scale defense, right? Deterrent. Make sure it doesn't fail. Like getting rid of it is not the option. But I guess if you have a better alternative, like he's talking about here, maybe it makes sense. I don't know. I don't know what this weapon is, but let's see. Dollars. So are ground launch nukes an obsolete, unnecessary thing of the past or a non-negotiable priority for national security? But first, I'd like to make an awkward segue and tell you about the only way this video is possible. I think it's the missile that can travel anywhere on the planet. Is that it? So you don't need ground-based one. You can just launch that from anywhere. But the whole reason of ground-based nuclear silos is that nobody knows where they are, right? And they can be safe. Well... 
there is a chance by espionage or something people can find out where your nuclear submarines are some things are something something right that's what the triad means you can screw all three of them one of them is enough to screw you up that's why you know nuclear triad is so important like you have capabilities from everything why do you want to rem you know like remove the ground thing yeah people go to original video page link and from there support this channel really this is like one of the few epic channels that is really fast and really creates high quality videos like this which always surprises me like how if you make fast videos it's gonna be some weird vlog style video like how i'm doing here type of way how are you creating script and editing all this fast right these videos are usually that fast time only so be quick america's icbm silos are spread across five states montana colorado wyoming nebraska and north dakota they're located across what's known as the Great Plains. The Great Plains encompasses 1 million square miles with its stunning beauty and sense of endless horizon. It provides an appropriate backdrop for these silent guardians. I love that. I'm, I'm learning about America a lot and I'm pretty, this is like a luscious place, right? Like farming, greenery, all that. I'm guessing these are flat plains where not much of mountain or something, Tornado Valley, that's basically the center of it, right? And this is more like uh, mountainous, barren and things like that, right? That must be the place because I'm pretty sure that's how geography goes. So the most luscious and greenery place is this, East Coast, I think. East? Yeah, East Coast. Right? I don't know. Comment down. It extends from the United States into Canada, hidden beneath the serene grasslands, the location is no accident. This vast, sparsely populated area provides both security and strategic advantage, making these silos a critical element in maintaining global stability through the concept of mutually assured destruction. Across Montana, there are hundreds of nuclear missile silos and many of them are hidden in plain sight behind just some fencing. They've been there since the 1950s and 60s. Why does mutually assured feels funny to me? It's like assurances are supposed to be like, oh, I assure you, you're going to be fine. I assure you, we are going to be dead. It's mutually assuring. It is an assurance because the whole point of that is nobody's going to launch it type of way. Unless some nuclear power feels like they're going to die or something. So might as well launch it, which is my panic. These, when they were first constructed during the Cold War. Surprisingly, the United States Air Force doesn't keep their locations a tightly guarded secret. Instead, they rely on what's known as sponge theory. Much like how a sponge absorbs huh? water, these silos are intended to soak up strikes from an enemy nuclear attack. The concept is chilling, yet strategic. By making the locations of these silos known, the United States ensures that any adversary would need to allocate a significant portion of their nuclear arsenal to targeting these sites. This in turn diverts attention- What? Makes sense, I guess. If India was supposed to attack USA, that would make sense. But if Russia and it's like, what, four or five thousand missiles, that's not really a strong thing because they can strike cities and these places as well. But I don't know, how many silos are there? Like a few hundred, maybe China? If China were to nuke USA, they have like, what, four or five hundred uh, nukes? I guess most of them would like, would have to like attack this. I don't know, there won't be any, any more strategy because nuclear tried, like, okay, you took out ground base, but now what about submarines and all that, right? So, yeah, but I guess it makes sense. Attention ...away from American cities, military bases, and critical infrastructure. The sheer number of these silos, with 150 spread across Montana alone, each roughly 4 to 18 miles apart, makes it nearly impossible for an enemy to destroy them all in one fell swoop. It's a calculated deterrent, much like how medieval armies would spread out their forces to make it harder for an invader to strike a decisive blow. There's such an open secret that each missile launch facility has their GPS coordinates and map of their location publicly available on Wikipedia. Each launch facility has wires that lead out to and control 10 missile silos. The launch crews consist of two officers who are there 24 seven around the clock monitoring them. They're down there right now as we speak, a few turns of a key away from Armageddon. Communication yeah, runs straight- one of, the, one of the first people will say like, what, you, what was that? And that's it. <laughs> from them to the president and the secretary of defense. If the crew loses contact for any reason, aircraft flying overhead can assume remote control and fire off their assigned missiles to execute the president's orders. Redundancy after redundancy like this is built into the system. Today, the US military has nine active missile squadrons deployed across three Air Force bases, spanning five states operating all ICBMs. 150,000 military personnel 
work here under United States Strategic Command. The Pentagon believes this gigantic shoot me sign would work as intended. That or Washington voted to make sure these weren't installed in their own backyard. But evidence for their usefulness... I was about to say, why not near New York or DC? Screw those people, right? Like, who cares? There you go. ...from the fact that China and Russia are copying this strategy and building their own brand new missile silos out in the middle of nowhere as well. China... Yeah, China basically is just another was oh, I can do that too. What US can do, I can do that too, basically. There you great go. ...six ballistic missile bases with 120,000 personnel. Their DF-41 ICBM, revealed in 2019, now has enough range to hit Washington, D.C. from Beijing. Since 2021, the People's Liberation Army has been busy digging 250 new missile silos in Yumen and Hami. Basically, it's like the Great Plains of China. China will have a total of 300. This is a major development that's caused alarm bells. These locations are deep in- The problem with China is that uh, eastern and northern China, at least most chunk of the China is mountainous. North of Tibet and all those places. They can literally put silos that will be harder, harder to hit them, right, accurately at least. So if anything, China's geography is better to hide missile silos and actually put that. And I'm guessing they must have put that there without telling anybody there because it just makes sense. Right? So that geography works for them because they're not using those places. Those places are empty. How, how are you going to you know, stay there? Maybe some towns. Most of the China is like a southern, western and northwestern part of it, right? Uh, most of the, you know, east, northeast and those type of things are mountainous. Inside China and specifically out of reach of U.S. conventional cruise missiles, and would require ICBM. Yeah, this, this, most of this place is just mountainous. This is the place they can live, right? It's the target. They're constructing 120 silos in Yumen. Unlike in America, China is doing it in a regimented grid pattern. It spans 300 square miles. Each missile silo in China is about two miles apart, similar to the United States strategy. There's some evidence to suggest that a lot of those missile silos are decoys or fakes, simply put there, to be a sponge, just like the U.S. strategy, to force those targets to be hit. That's kind of smart. Why didn't U.S. did that? If you're going to put that silos every few miles or something, put some, make some of them fake. Like, only in doing that to, like, you know, tell people, like, we have silos at these distances, you can attack all of them. Deterrent, basically. So you don't have to fill all of them. In the event of war. It's a bold strategy, but it seems to have worked at deterring nuclear war so far. However, critics say... Sponge theory is an outdated boomer war meta. They say it's rooted in outdated Cold War era thinking that doesn't reflect new realities and weapon well, systems. It's so yesterday. For one thing, the middle of the country is also America's breadbasket. Around half of all American farmers live in the Midwest states, with around 127 million acres of agricultural land. Yeah, but if nuclear war comes, you're gonna have that many mouths to feed. I mean, come on. Across the country. Look at fallout. Tree. Most of the country's corn and soybeans come from the Midwest, along with 15% of America's dairy products. Here in the United States, we call it flyover country because many people living in cities only ever see this part of the country. Exactly, that's like such a... Why, why do these, all this like, what is it, red state? Why are those red state angry all the time? Why do they hate New York and DC? Yeah, because you call them flyover state. If you see, like, we only fly over you, we don't care about you, we'll just go to New York to, like, Los Angeles. Who cares about the middle? Of course, they're gonna be pissed about it. <laughs> Especially when you put silos and all that shit that concern the whole country and whatever. But, yeah. <laughs> when they fly from coast to coast. But it's also the nation's heartland. A concentrated nuclear attack on silos based here would see radioactive fallout carried far and wide on prevailing winds, contaminating much of America's food supply. It's a tornado valley. What if tornadoes valley, tornado time comes? It's a nuclear fallout. Oh my God, there are tornadoes now. Not to mention tornado was rise because of these nuclear attacks because it would create this kind of heat and all that, right? If it, if it happens to just strike when the tornado season is high, that's all fucked, right? That is insane. I always assume like, okay, if... If you're living in the U.S., I guess don't live in major cities, go into that, this you know, red state or flyover states or whatever. Probably no missile is going to strike there because why would somebody attack this? Like they're going to attack major cities and things. Apparently not. Even they are not safe. Supply. Because of great variability in wind directions, the entire population of the United States would be at risk of lethal fallout. Critics of land-based ICBMs claim that they're strategically redundant. 
that their value has diminished because of the advancement of other technologies since the 1950s, like submarine-launched ballistic missiles and air-launched cruise missiles, which provide more flexible, survivable deterrent options. Those platforms are less vulnerable to a first strike, for instance. But the counterpoint to all this is that advances in missile defense systems could potentially reduce the effectiveness of submarine and air-launched cruise missiles over time. Supporters of these ground-launched missiles say that they have higher speeds and direct trajectories, which make them less susceptible to interception compared to other... Yeah, I mean, they're gigantic. Ground uh, ICBMs are gigantic and big, right? I mean, you can't have that kind of size in, like, submarines. ...livery platforms. Ground launch locations have a reduced flight trajectory since missiles would travel north over Canada and the North Pole. This basically reduces the distance between the United States and Russia compared to some submarine launched options. I sit here and I learn about all of this and my first thought is how are we supposed to know which scientists and which experts are right? Especially when there's a $141 billion incentive to say they're absolutely necessary to national security. It's a frustrating topic, and it's what Congress and the U.S. military has to deal with on a daily basis. This is well, deal with, man. It's $140 billion. Money. Money to defense contractor. It doesn't matter what the answer is. They're going to be, yeah, we need this. We need this, definitely. And it's better safe than sorry type of thing. What we do know for certain, though, is that... Decades-old aging Minuteman III missiles have been refurbished twice already and are nearing their absolute limits. This is because rocket fuel goes bad over time, along with other components of a warhead and flight system, so O-rings wear out, rubber corrodes, metal rusts. We're all fighting entropy in life, even nuclear missiles. Altogether, the Air Force estimates... I mean, it's metal, it's mechanical. Yeah, of course, all that shit happens. Why wouldn't it be? Right, but is it so costly to replace fuel time to time? I mean, any fuel goes bad, right? If you, if you keep your petrol car there for like multiple months, you probably shouldn't start that until like removing all the fuel because that's gonna cause problem. Porting that refueling and refurbishing those old missiles would be around $38 billion more expensive than just designing an all new missile from the ground up. Great, so we're running out of time and we need to make the right decision How? now. This is where the Sentinel Missile Upgrade Program comes into play. If the United States is going to do this, then the cheapest option is to replace all missiles with a new series called the LGM-35 Sentinel. The problem is, it's already two years behind schedule and $45 billion over budget before a single missile is even on the production line. It's currently 80% higher in cost than initial estimates back in 2019. Yeah, but you already gave the money. That's the thing, right? They went over budget because you already gave the money. There's no point of scrapping it now. You're all in. If you make something else, then you're giving even more money now. That's a lot of money even for the military industrial complex. To put that into context, with $141 billion, you could buy around half a million average priced homes in the United States. Proponents of the weapon argue that it's... There, there, there is no point of giving uh, this kind of like comparison, man. That's one thing I've learned. When it comes to military, money flows like it's nothing. But then when it comes to like civilian life, it's, it's like a two different thing entirely, right? It's like pe people cry over even a billion when it comes to anything, city development or something. But when it comes to military, 100 billion, it's like, no, no, who cares? It's just 100 billion type of way. So it's like different things, right? I don't know. Uh, I'm pretty sure like... Uh, was it Joe Rogan or something? I don't know. Like, I saw a clip or something like, okay, every single home in LA for the homeless shelter costs like a, a million or something. Like, if it costs that, the military budget makes sense or should be more or something. Like, you can't compare like that, first of all. Right? It's a different thing. No uh, homeless home, uh, whatever shelter, should cost a million piece. That's just fucked up. Right? A million is not a joke. A million dollars. Even in US, a million dollars is not a joke. Right? You should get a much bigger mansion like thing in a million dollars. So comparing shit like that doesn't work. Literally the top defense priority and that cost doesn't matter. It's not a factor. In 2010, US Nuclear Posture Review argues that if any single leg of the nuclear triad is allowed to lag behind the others, it ceases to be a credible threat altogether, that diminishing and a half the combined died. deterrent of all three and making nuclear conflict more likely, not less. So why is it so expensive, though? Well, part of the insane cost comes from the fact that the Minuteman because 3 militaries. series is so ancient at this point that all people and designers and engineers who built them have passed away already, so no one really knows exactly how to make them anymore, 
You're using today's system. The fuck? <laughs> Isaac Newton is dead. I'm pretty sure we know Newton and physics. What, they didn't wrote it down? Nobody knows how that works. Nobody knows how science and engineering works. What kind of what? That might sound hard to believe, but the entire field of industrial manufacturing has changed dramatically since the 1960s and 70s. Imagine if they just stopped building computers in 1970, completely banned building computers in 1970. It would take a minute to refigure how to do that today. That might People stop making steam powered things, right? A lot of it. I'm pretty sure somebody can make a, I've seen that, right? I'm pretty sure on YouTube or something. People, people cleverly figured out how to make a steam powered car or some shit as a novelty thing. Technology and science, I mean, somebody's gonna write down somewhere, it's gonna be there. What, how, how do they forget that? Maybe it's gonna be a bit harder, right? But it's not like you can't figure it out. Might be a bad analogy, but you get my point. Because today's design and manufacturing techniques are more capable and sophisticated in many ways. But replicating methods common in the mid 20th century is a very different ball game. Major components of the Minuteman 3 don't lend themselves to what's called computer numerical control machining. There are very few companies that still have the industrial capacity and expertise to make one of these. It's not as- I mean, I can see it's uh, back then with the technology that they had. In today, it's better to do it from scratch because our technology is insane. Computer is insane. Even everything's AI powered now. Like it might, oh great, give nuclear power to AI. Not that way. But we can do much more efficiently nowadays, right? And it could become cheaper if we like develop this kind of like a technology in that direction. So in the future, even it becomes cheaper if you want to like replace it or maintain it. St start this kind of a thing would be better than trying to rebuild something of the past like that. It makes sense. Simple as just contacting SpaceX. While there's been an explosion of private spaceflight companies over the past few decades, their emphasis has been on building efficient, reusable, liquid-fueled rockets, not the sort of large diameter, high-thrust, solid-fueled rockets like the ICBMs use in the boost stages. Northrop Grumman won the initial contract worth $85 billion. Within two years, the engineers at Northrop Grumman had a fully designed replacement. The Air Force officially adopted the proposed design in April of 2022. Sentinel has the capacity to carry up to three warheads that can each direct themselves to entirely separate targets. However, to try and bring down global tensions, the United States and Russia signed the New START Treaty in 2010. This is actually one treaty that the United States and Russia agreed to renew until 2026. So as a matter of policy, American ICBMs only- Wait a minute, they're gonna agree at 2026 after everything's happening? I highly doubt, I highly doubt Russia will agree to that now. Maybe if USA gets really strongly, if you don't agree to this, I'll assume we are at war or some shit like that, which Russia probably won't want or something. That's what, that's what I think about like preventing nuclear. Like you shouldn't go soft in any way. If you don't agree with this, it's aggression. I'll assume you go, you're, you're preparing to go to war or something. You might as well be at war type of shit, right? If, if you want like, uh, you know, like uh, properly like de-escalating like that, like, okay, it's nukes, let's not fuck around, let's sign the treaty type of way. You need to be strong like that. Because eventually, I always come back to like uh, World War II theory, right? When Germany was like really weak, uh, you know, Weimar Republic, whatever, really weak until slowly it rise up, until Hitler came, Hitler came slowly, tried to like dominate some things around it. People like, oh, it's fine, it's probably nothing, it's probably nothing until it was so big a thing now, right? You need to be aggressive and decide like, no, this is, this is a line you shouldn't cross type of shit. I don't know. But and as far as the Elon Musk thing, SpaceX thing, right? I think, you know, I'm pretty sure US and DARPA probably has in their mind at least, or like in the works, a nuclear missile that is reusable. How basically you launch a missile, it goes to like space, like how intercontinental ballistic missile works goes to space and launches mini, uh, you know, like modular nukes at different places, scatter, scatter nuke type of way. I'm pretty sure there was already like technology like that that can scatter nukes like that and comes back, right? Usable nuclear missiles or some shit. They carry one warhead per missile, plus whatever decoys or highly classified penetration aids the Air Force includes. The Sentinel will be fitted with existing stocks of the W870 thermonuclear warhead. These have a blast yield equivalent for about 300 kilotons of TNT. For context, imagine 300,000 one-ton TNT bombs exploding simultaneously. 
The Sentinel missiles will later be upgraded to the W87-1 at 475 kilotons. Just the fireball of it alone would be almost 2 kilometers wide, and the shockwave would still be 1 psi of overpressure beyond 15 kilometers. The W87-1 warhead itself represents a restart of the American military industry here. The United States hasn't produced a fully manufactured nuclear warhead since the end of the Cold War over 30 years ago. A lot of this manufacturing expertise has been lost to time. Kimberly Boudel, director of Lawrence Livermore Laboratories, said, quote, Over the last two decades, our adversaries have rapidly modernized and expanded their nuclear capabilities. While the United States lost its ability to manufacture critical warhead components, as facilities aged and capabilities atrophied without a consensus on the path forward, the W87... So you're telling me North Korea can make nukes, but you can't right now? Uh, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to feel about that, especially when tensions are rising all around the world. Especially when it feels like Axis is rising up with China, North Korea, and Russia compared to the NATO or something. And India in the center probably saying, no, 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 everybody calm down, everybody calm down. That's it. Dash one modification program changes that. Relearning to design, engineer, and produce a warhead presents a tremendous challenge. But we are working side by side with our partners to deliver for the nation and transform the nuclear security enterprise in multiple critical areas. A big part of the constant cost overruns and delays for the whole Sentinel missile program are thanks to the long lull in specialized manufacturing. The Sentinel program blew over its budget so much that it triggered an automatic congressional review thanks to the Nunn-McCurdy Amendment. That act was signed into law back in 1983 to rein in ballooning cost of American weapons development, forcing the DoD to submit a review to Congress on any project that exceeds certain thresholds. Because the Sentinel missile program had exceeded 50% of its original cost estimates, the program represented a critical breach of the amendment, automatically canceling the entire project unless the Secretary of Defense could convince Congress that the program was necessary and the increasing costs were justified. On July 8th, 2024... Hold up there. So, after spending 50% of money, you would cancel project just because it's spending 50% of money, like going over budget like that? Shouldn't you figure it out? Like, let's figure it, this thing out. Okay, it's, it's on our attention. It's on Congress's attention. But since we've spent so much fucking money, 50% is no joke. Let's figure it out rather than completely cancel it. Isn't that a waste of money? That doesn't make sense to me. The 50%, right, come on. Or, the Pentagon submitted their findings of the Nunn-McCurdy review, arguing that the Sentinel program should continue. Speaking anonymously to Inside Defense, a DOD official said, quote, Broadly speaking, the root cause analysis conducted as part of the Nunn-McCurdy process found that a lack of effective systems engineering led to an immature technical baseline at milestone B. That's bureaucratic speech for, look, we haven't had to build one of these things in 50 years, so give us a break, okay? Now, Sentinel isn't only about the... Now, imagine same thing. Imagine same thing, but with NASA. NASA's budget is close to nothing compared to all this. What is it, like few 50, 60 billion or something? I'm pretty sure it's something like that, right? The whole year's budget. And they are constantly at the frontier. They are literally the frontier of technology. Everything gets built up from that. Right? You can credit Elon Musk all you want, but the technology he took from NASA and tried to develop his own reusable missile, and he was successful. He's standing on the shoulder of NASA. Right? NASA does everything first. Right? People, people have said this constantly, like no company is going to invest into something that they don't know is right or not. NASA does that first, and then everybody picks up from that. Right? And NASA has like barely any budget, right? And they have to do all this like crazy space shit. 70, 60 to 70 percent of entire GDP of the planet exists because of what NASA did in Apollo program. And like they barely have any budget. Well, all the military budget is like hundreds and hundreds of billion. You can give a few money. You can, what is it, 28 trillion USS GDP? Uh, China's is 18 and then comes Germany, which is like four. You people are flying way too high on sky. That's how much money you have. You can spend a bit of money in NASA. I mean, come on. You want to have like next... The only reason you have that much money is because of NASA. Because NASA is part of America. It's America, basically. Right? Because of NASA, you have this kind of GDP. You wouldn't have like 28 trillion otherwise. So isn't it smart to spend in NASA so they can figure out more shit 
that you can make as a like an innovative thing and sell to the world and grow your GDP even more? Missile. It's also about modernizing every component associated with its infrastructure. That means tearing out old 1970s tech from existing silos and replacing it with new, fully digital systems. That means LiDAR scans of silos to make sure that they'll withstand the kind of impacts that they were designed for even decades after they've been exposed to elements. Sentinel is essentially five programs in one, and site upgrades account for the majority of the cost overruns, not the missile design itself. Using the existing silos definitely saves money, but there's over 7,500 miles worth of copper cables alone in America's missile silos. All of it needs to be inspected, recertified, or replaced as needed. Dr. William LaPlante, the director of Nunn McCurdy Review, said that Sentinel is truly historic program to modernize the land leg of the triad, and its scale, scope, and complexity are something we haven't attempted as a nation in 60 years, end quote. So who you believe in all of this is going to depend on how you feel about the missile program. But from their point of view, the proponents of it, it's meant to be safer and reduce the risk of accidental nuclear war. For all the hype around adopting new missiles. The accidental things have happened, right? There is literally a place where you put a plaque that, holy shit, or something like that. that we nearly exploded. Basically, some official world, like there was a nuclear accident here. Somehow they dropped nuclear missiles out of a cargo plane. Somehow they didn't explode at one place. Right, and you'd literally put plaque like oh, things went, th things might have gone really bad here. So it's not like accidents haven't happened in the past, right? Almost has happened, right? You would have heard like, remember that time when we nuked one of our own state type of way? So I kind of see where they're going from. Like, you know, do we need that if it's like aging and you are the number one country on the planet where everybody's probably gunning for you? Like, oh, USA, that just, you know, it's, it's become a slogan for people to say, oh, you know, America this, America that. You probably need nukes. Come on, man. The Sentinel was designed less around adding new capabilities over the old Minuteman 3 and more about updating the ICBM to new standards that'll extend out for the next 50 years. The Sentinel has improved safety and security features over the older missile. During the Cold War, computer glitches on both the United States and Russian side led to multiple close calls, and since then, cybersecurity has added a whole new dimension here. Supporters of maintaining the land-based ICBMs say that they underwrite every operation and negotiation taken by America, that they back up effective diplomacy with other nuclear powers. Sentinel's boosters use a new solid rocket fuel chemistry that are stable enough to only need refueling every 40 years instead of every 20, which supporters argue will save billions of dollars in life cycle. And there you go, classic example of how to waste in physical term physics term how to waste the most energy doing nothing literally a rocket basically wasting all that fuel and energy with bolted to the ground not moving anywhere i don't know it's testing ro rocket but still cycle costs over the many decades of service that these missiles are expected to last static ground-based nukes are the cheapest option since they don't need expensive submarines to deliver they don't need separate transport erector launcher vehicles like what China and Russia use on their road mobile systems. Ultimately, the debate around adopting the Sentinel missile is a controversial one as it keeps a large nuclear stockpile in the first place. There are good arguments on both sides for how either position keeps us safe or less safe. With the massive budget for Sentinel... Dude, others, other countries have nuke. China has nukes. China is growing faster. Russia, I don't know how many of them rockets work, but they're still having thousands. So it's not a question like, should we, okay, if the question is like, let's, let's not do Sentinel program, so we don't have rockets, so we just reduce, nu reduce nuclear rocket. Yeah, for you, everybody else did. Okay, let's scrap all the ground-based rockets. Old one is not working, let's not make new one. What did you just do? You just like reduce your thing. If anything, if like two people are holding gun at, at each other, if you lower your gun, what are the chances the other guy is going to lower if he might shoot you, right? I don't know. The only way you, you can remove nukes is everybody together. They're like everybody put down your gun. That is the only way to happen, right? You reducing yours is just going to make things worse. If anything, that might give incentive others to use because they're not afraid of you anymore. Will be better spent on another defense priority or, or maybe on buying 500,000 homes? Does a land-based nuclear deterrent really work? Or <laughs> Imagine that, going to the Pentagon, 
okay, we're not spending this money into Sentinel program. Should we use something else or should we build homes? And everybody just look around, what the fuck you just said? Homes? You know where you're standing, get out of here. Who cares about homes? Let's talk about guns and weapons. Other factors prevented nuclear war more than just the threat of mutually assured destruction. These are tough questions that get to the very heart of defense strategy in the nuclear age. And I don't believe any one person has all the answers. But the decisions we make today as America's future ground launch nuclear program continues, it'll certainly shape our future no matter what direction we go in. Thanks again to War Thunder and a reminder that for new- Yeah, I don't know about all that. I don't know about shaping or something, but yeah, if, if your older nukes are not working, you have to build new one until everybody basically, especially when Russia is literally at war and Russia have like the most nukes on the planet. How many of them working? Who knows? Well, in, even if they're like 20% is working, that's a lot. Because last I checked, they had like, what, five, 6,000 or something? China has 400 officially, officially in big ass quotes and mark. Who knows how many North Korea has? Yeah, by the way, North Korea can nuke one of the, like, Los Angeles or New York or something. I don't, I don't even know what. They have capabilities to nuke US as well, apparently, because North Korea has nukes now, right? So this is not the time to think. Should we lower our nukes or something, especially when the war is rising up around the world? You, one would say, yeah, war is rising up, so we don't need nuke. Because what if we nuke each other? Yeah, enough countries have nuke that if war would lead to nukes, everybody's going to get nuke, regardless of USA has or not. If anything, if USA has better technology, it might be just enough of a deterrent to not fuck with it. I don't know. But yeah. I'm the last guy who would say, like, have more weapons, but this just feels sensible, right? I don't like wars. I always say, like, doesn't matter who it is. Like, damn. I'm an Indian, right? The whole India's slogan is, like, pacifist, right? I'm not going to attack you unless you slap me first, whole Gandhi's quote, right? I'm one of those people, but yeah, you need deterrent. Indian is all about deterrent. All right, well, if you like my next time, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.